guests. We are delighted to welcome you to our beautiful city of Antwerp in this historic marriage hall, which used to be the stateroom where kings, presidents, and other officials were received. You are in good company. We are very proud to have been awarded the European City of Trees Award from EAC. This is the ultimate create credit to all our hard work. Thank you for the opportunity to highlight our vision on trees, for which we have received the award. This keynote presentation explains our vision on trees, how we focus on innovation, how we optimize our day-to-day -day processes, and how we see our city as a role model for citizens and fellow public administrations. And, of course, we talk in detail about our success story, the Future Trees Project. Antwerp is a central city in the Flemish region of Belgium. It has around 529,000 inhabitants and covers an area of about 20,429 hectares. Antwerp owes its size to the fact that it was expanded by eight peripheral municipalities in 1958 and 1983. The former city and peripheral municipalities are now districts within the current city of Antwerp. As in many other cities, there is a steady increase in buildings and infrastructure. In addition, there is the global issue of climate change. In response to those challenges, Antwerp is putting more and more effort in creating a green environment. Trees play an important part in this because of the many benefits they create for the ecosystem. Antwerp's vision is to focus on as many large trees as possible instead of focusing purely on the number of trees. After all, a large tree benefits the ecosystem far more than several small ones. So, no lollies if Antwerp can help it. Instead, we focus on future trees. This vision is detailed in our tree plan, a management document endorsed formally by the Antwerp City Council. This tree plan not only sets out the theoretical basis, but also provides a number of practical guidelines for city planners and engineers. One of the main principles is that in order to manage our advisory role, our trees are divided into different classes. This classification takes into account the size of the tree and the amount of tree soil it can use. Each tree is given two numbers, one for its size, the crown projection area, and one for the known amount of tree soil. The largest number indicates which class the tree belongs to. There are three possible classifications. Small, less than 25 cubic meters root soil area, or 25 square meters crown projection. There's medium, 25 to 49 cubic or square meters. And there is large, more than 50 cubic or square meters. For existing trees, the crown projection area is usually the determining factor. For newly planted trees, it is more likely to be the amount of tree soil that is provided. The species is not a determining factor. This, slice, this slide shows two examples of large trees. On the left, you see a young tree with a large area of tree soil, which in this case is the determining factor. On the right, you see a mature tree that has 
establishes itself under the paved area. The amount of tree soil is unknown, but in this case, the canopy volume or crown projection area classifies it as being a large tree. The city of Antwerp does not want the number of large trees and the benefits they represent to decrease. Therefore, when a large tree dies, the crown projection area is calculated and a new replacement tree must be planted in the same spot and given enough tree soil to allow it to grow to the same size or even larger. When small trees have to be replaced, their number can be reduced, but in time, the canopy volume of the replacing tree or trees has to equal or surpass the last canopy volume. This means that any number of small trees can be replaced by one or more large trees, or by extending the tree soil area of an existing tree. Or by extending the tree soil area of an existing tree so that it can grow bigger. This approach may reduce the total number of trees in the city, but the overall canopy volume will remain the same or increase, and the number of large trees will also increase. This approach also means that in some projects, the initial canopy volume immediately after reconstruction will be minimal. This is solved by planting additional carefully selected support trees around the main tree. These support trees are chosen to disappear of their own accord when the main tree takes up their space as it grows into a future tree. At least they will never achieve their full potential and hinder the main tree in its growth. To realize our vision, the city of Antwerp invests on different levels. A dedicated organization, organization was developed. There is a strong focus on innovation. We update our processes and techniques regularly and we launched a long-term project focusing on future trees. This slide shows our specialized staff. On a management level, the tree expert team has three colleagues, two of whom are ETT and one is an ETT trainee. Our maintenance crew consists of a dedicated tree team with 14 colleagues six of whom are ETW. They, they are complemented by employees of the local teams who receive tailor-made basic training on tree planting, pruning and maintenance. To supplement our own staff, we appoint a hired contractor for additional sur surveying and pruning. This contractor is selected on the basis of both price and skill. Another, another major focus for the city of Antwerp is on innovation. Employees have to stay up to date in terms of tree knowledge. So regular training courses are organized, mostly in-house. This slide shows a, re a recent course on crown and root architecture. It is not always possible to give a tree a large open tree soil area. Space is restricted and paving is often a necessity. In that case, pavement supporting tree soil structures are the solution. Several different types have been tested in the past years and we will show and de discuss them in detail during our walk on Sunday. Antwerp also takes the lead when it comes to the combination of blue and green. To best withstand the challenges of climate change, water is essential. At crucial locations, 
we invest in artificial water buffers with capillary action. In other locations, efforts are made to drain off water from the paving into the planting beds, combined with a growing medium that can retain a lot of water. Because we don't want our trees to drown, we developed a graph together with water manager Aquafin, with which designers can easily check the maximum amount of water allowed to run off into a specific growing area. Road surveys are carried out using an air spade. And this is not always, as this is not always possible in closed pavements, we have recently tested a tree radar in order to see to what extent this method can be used instead. Drones are the future. We plan to conduct tests in the near future, for example, to monitor the condition of trees. Not only the quantity of growing medium is important, so is the quality. In close collaboration with a producer of substrates, we are developing a growing medium that will help trees to be resilient to climate change. Our aim is to develop a growing medium that can retain a lot of water, contains many nutrients, doesn't get waterlogged when it rains after a long period of drought, and that can be produced using local ingredients. During the process of a reconstruction project, there are several moments. There are several moments where our expert contribution is crucial. In the project initiation phase, a tree report is issued based on the results of a visual inspection and the soil and root survey. Each existing tree gets a specific rating. The tree ratings are visualized using different colors. Trees can be classified as to be kept and protected at all costs, the yellow color, to be felt only when absolutely necessary, the light blue color, to be retained when possible, the brown color, and to be felt, the red color. When the preliminary design is presented, we analyze the existing situation, situation and the new proposal. We compare the two in terms of the number of small, medium, large and future trees, as well as in terms of the total canopy volume after construction and as expected in the optimal situation. We take into account the total surface area of the open planting zones and the different types of pavement supporting structures. Growth site structures should meet both the requirements of trees and of the paving. This is why a group of experts, including tree experts and city engineers, has been set up. If a particular type of construction is deemed useful by all parties, it is included in the range. Certain types of pavement supporting structures, particularly the sandwich constructions, do not match the rules of conventional road construction. Therefore, not all classical checks on the where we carried out can be applied. In order to ensure that sandwich constructions can still be used in the city, the team has issued specifications and inspection methods. This is a perfect example of tree protection, which is included in our requirements for execution. In the final design phase, when execution plans are drawn up, we specify the necessary protective measures for existing trees that have to be taken during construction.
as part of our day-to-day -day processes, our maintenance duties rely upon a detailed inventory, which is continu continually updated, updated and acts as a communications tool between our management team and the maintenance crews. In day-to-day -day maintenance, a distinction is made in the size of our trees. Smaller trees are checked and pruned by local teams using leather and the stick saw. Larger trees are maintained by the specialist, specialized tree time or a hired contractor. We have abandoned the classic flow of first fully checking the trees and then at a later stage taking the necess necessary measures. We now start with a very quick global visual check executed from a bicycle or a car. After this check, there are two possible scenarios. If there are, if there are indications that most trees in a street need pruning, every tree is checked in detail by an ETW and the necessary measures are taken on the spot. We prefer this way of working because the ATW always inspects the tree stability before he starts climbing and he can judge defects in the crown better than someone who inspects from the ground floor. In the second scenario, when at first glance trees don't seem to need any attention, they will be inspected fully from the ground floor at a later date. After this full check, separate maintenance orders are issued when necessary. Another important focus for the city of Antwerp is our very own tree nursery, north of the city, close to the Dutch border. It is being systematically transformed from a traditional nursery to a nursery where the main focus lies on growing trees that are difficult to find in the regular trade. These are trees from certified native plant material, are trees grown from seeds we collected ourselves from trees that are performing particularly well in our city. These can be both native and non-native species. We presume that such trees will be better adapted to the challenges of climate change. We let them grow naturally, that means without over-fertilizing, without topping, and with enough space between them when they are transplanted. The ultimate goal is to grow well-shaped large and future trees whose parents have proven to grow well in our city. A small number of trees will be allowed to, de to develop into climbing trees or characterful park trees. Moreover, we are developing a range of support trees in larger sizes to increase the initial canopy volume when they are planted in the city. And now to, uh, to our very own success story, the Future Tree Project. A future tree is a large tree which sits in a built-up environment and for which the necessary provision, provisions and, the, uh, and uh, accompanying investments have been made to allow it to grow large and in full health. In order to qualify as a future tree, the large tree must meet a number of requirements, both general and specific. The general requirements are, the tree must be a size 1A. It must be able to grow more than 120 years old in our climate zone. It must not be columnar. It should be located more than seven meters from surrounding buildings. It must be healthy and not show any defects or diseases that cannot be cured permanently. There are also specific requirements for the location. 
New trees must have a root soil area of 100 cubic meters. Unless a very rich growth medium is provided, then 80 cubic meters is enough. The root soil area of existing trees can be less than 80 or 100 cubic meters, provided they already have a crown projection of at least 100 cubic meters. Their condition is good or moderate, and the visible part of their growing site is in a good order. We also have candidate future trees. These are existing trees that nearly meet all requirements and whose deficiencies can be resolved within reasonable limits. In order to quickly get as many future trees as possible, the Future Tree Project was launched in 2018. This project ensures investment in individual growth conditions for existing trees, independent of any reconstruction projects, or creates, creates growing areas for new future trees in open spaces which are not yet being developed. In 2021, the Antwerp City Council freed up 2 million euros as an additional incentive for the districts, districts to invest in growth site improvements and thus achieve more future trees. It is not only visible in the Antwerp streets, but citizens can also find more information about the concept of future trees on the Antwerp City website. The viewer shows selected details of our green inventory. Sp spreading the word is key. The Antwerp Communications Department launched a YouTube video presented by Warren Borgmans, a famous Flemish actor. This was picked up immediately and was a huge hit. Several newspaper articles followed, including a report on the planting of a future tree in a school playground by our vice mayor for green spaces. Spreading the word even further, a quick internet search of the term future trees gives you a perfect idea of how widespread the term has become in such a short space of time. Future trees are, future trees really are the future, that's for sure. Ending on a high, here are our four major takeaways. One, maximize your canopy volumes. Say no to lollies, except for the ice cream variety. Two, innovate and invest in expertise. The return on investment will be multiple. Three, think about the invisible. Don't be afraid to invest in underground constructions. They will guarantee a longer life for all your plants above ground. Four, invest in the future, invest in future trees. In this presentation, we have given you a brief overview of the city of Antwerp tree policy. We hope you are as convinced as we are that this beautiful green city of Antwerp fully deserves to be city of trees in 2023. Thank you very much for your attention. I will gladly answer any questions during the coffee break or the tree walk on Sunday. Thank you. Thank you.